We want to move on to the state issue. Uh, there's a lot of things at the state, and uh, you know, one of the things I like about local and state issues is that unlike Washington issues, when's the last time any of you sat down with Senator Bob Cork or Senator Lamar Alexander? Anyone? Anyone? Remember that uh, Ferris Bueller? Uh, anyone? Anyone? No one, right? And yet, tonight we have local and state officials, elected officials here tonight, and I can see these guys anytime I want to. And you can see these guys anytime you want to. You can call up, call them up. You know right where they live. They live just down the street from you. Mike Carter literally lives down the street and around the corner from me. I could almost probably throw a rock at his house, and you know, so far I haven't wanted to. <laughs> but 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 that's the thing about state and local is that you can really engage. You can meet these people, and you can hold them accountable to what they said they were going to do. Well, one of the things I really appreciate about Representative Mike Carter is the fact that he has taken on an issue that is so near and dear to every one of us. And that's, what is it? The annexation. annexation. But it's really fundamentally about the right to vote. That's what it's about. And it's amazing to me that in America, we're fighting with people over the right to vote. And we're only one of three states in the entire country that are fighting this battle. The other 47 have got it right. Okay, so uh, Mike Carter, uh, Representative Mike Carter, two years ago was elected, uh, former judge, uh, former or still an attorney, don't hold that against him, uh, but also a businessman. And so this issue was kind of a hot potato, but Mike is the kind of guy that will just wade into it, fearless, okay, and uh, take this on. And this issue has not just taken on what you might think are the typical uh, Challenges. This is people in his own party that he's taken on. So, Mike, I've asked Mike to come tonight, Representative Carter, and give us an update about this issue. Thank you, Mark. I've just got in, so excuse my dress. I ran a little over today, and I had some things I had to do, so I changed clothes, forgetting I was coming here, and I jumped in the car. Here I am, so please forgive me for that. Um, let me uh, give you a little background if you're not aware. Last year, um, when I ran for this office, I went to everyone asking, <laughs> asking for their support and all the city people said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm going to change the law on annexation. And they all smiled. And so then when I filed the bill, they called and said, what the heck are you doing? I said, I'm doing exactly what I told you I was going to do. Then it got near passing and they began to panic and so one called me and they said how do we stop you? and I said wait a minute you said you supported me I promised to do this I'm doing it and he said yeah but we're not used to politicians doing what they say <laughs> so that bill was a battle now for the last there have been bills filed on annexation for the last 42 years not one has made it out of the smallest committee. We made it. In order to get there and break the hole of the Tennessee Municipal League, we compromised by adding a one-year stop on annexation while we figured out what to do. They thought we'd give up. We didn't give up. We just got madder. And so we're back this year with a bill to make it final. Do you understand something? That we can stand and argue about what Obama does, and we can be here all night. I assume this is not the Obama for a third term group. I didn't see a sign, I assume it's not. But I'm like Mark. I need to deal with practical things. I need to get something changed. God has blessed me beyond any and all reason. I went up there to do some things that matter, not to get reelected. So help me do that. What is the greatest threat to you if you live in the county? It is annexation. They're going to change your life. They change your taxes. More importantly, they change the regulation. A gentleman called me this week from Goodlettsville. His insurance office burned. His daddy had it. It burned. Total loss. They push it over. He goes to the county and gets a building permit. 
He starts building. The city comes out and says, whoa, stop. He said, ah, you idiots. I'm in the county. They said, you idiot. The city controls the county. You cannot build that building until you get plans approved by us. He calls me and says, they're stupid, aren't they? I said, no, sir. In your county, they're exactly right. They own you. He's not even in the city. Understand that the Tennessee Municipal League is the most powerful lobby in Nashville. They're known as the Mayor's Union. More importantly, in the year 2000, what did they do? They almost brought a state income tax to you. That's who they are. Now, how many of you think Tennessee is a red state? Raise your hands. Oh, I, I should have done it. I hate to do this. Let me say this. Don't raise your hand. If you think Tennessee is a red state, you're horribly mistaken. Come to Nashville and follow me around one day and you'll see it is not a red state. What you will find is it is red counties and it's blue cities. And the cities have influence over guys and ladies like me up there such that they get the laws passed where they control the counties. So they control the state. You follow me? Now, two years ago, I didn't know this. And I was a lawyer, and I'm a former judge. If anybody should know it, I should. We don't know it here because Hamilton County has always had strong county mayors and executives and leaderships and has kept the, the cities at bay. In other areas, that's not true. So we're running a bill, and everybody's been calling, Mark's been calling, Mike, what's the number of the bill? How can I help you? And I can't give him the number of that bill. Why is that? I got to get a Senate sponsor. Good night. Over the summer, the Tennessee Municipal League and those mayors have done their homework. I haven't been sitting on my hands now. I've been one end of the state to the other. I've written editorials. I've been on TV shows. I've been on radio. I've been to the Tennessee Federation of Republican Women. I've been everywhere that would let me come beating this drum. And right now, I don't have anybody to carry the bill in the Senate. Now, let me ask you this. When did you think, living in Tennessee, that you would have to move to California to have your property rights adequately defended? California, you get a vote. Mm. I'm saying, if they come and they tell you you cannot build on your property, or what you must build on your property, or that you must do this or you must do that, they're taking a part of your freedom, your property right from you by imposing their will on you. Mm -hmm. They do that in Tennessee without a vote. You have never had the right to vote on that. In the year 2000, when this grand law was passed, and it has done a lot of good, that law was never voted on the people. Now, what happened? They allowed public meetings. Uh, did you go to any of those, April? If you weren't there, no one was there. Uh, my understanding is they do have a record that one night one person attended. In Wilson County, they kept a log of everyone that attended. They had one person at every meeting every night. One person. So, what we're saying is, if they're going to come out, if more government, more regulation, less freedom, and more taxes, doesn't entitle you to a right to vote, then let's move to California where they're conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> now, a simple deal. If they're going to annex you, you get a right to vote. That's all it is. Now, not in Tennessee. The fastest growing 10 states in the nation, all referendum states. The mayors come and tell us, Carter, you're going to kill economic development. Well, then how in the world are we losing industry to other states when they vote? Cities say, if we can't grow, we die. Folks, that's a Ponzi scheme. Yes. Yeah. What happens, look at East Ridge. East Ridge is starting to come back. Red Bank is doing much better now. They've grown as far as they grow. Don't listen to the garbage. Let me end by saying this. I had a guy come to see me today that said, would you please go to Washington? I said, absolutely not. <laughs> he said, all politicians say that. I said, listen to me, read my lips. <laughs> Why? Boy, think of how nice that would be. I said, I'm not going to be nice. 
I'm going to make friends. Didn't go to Nashville for that. I went to do something. I'll run into Mark West someday on the street, and he'll ask me. I've got to know that we're doing the work of the people. I don't want to be a politician. I want to go and do a few things and leave. And we need some younger people in here to push us old guys out of the way and take over and do it. Help me pass this law. Now think about this. All I'm asking is that these cities who are splitting atoms, curing cancer, doing the greatest work in the world, all I'm asking them to do is get the approval of the people whose lives are going to change. Is that a revolutionary concept? Now, let me say this. Last year, every Hamilton County representative supported this bill with all of their gusto. And I hope and pray they will again this year. And I'll tell you one thing. Last year when this bill was dead, I called a guy named Mark West. I said, Mark, we're dead in the water. He said, I'll be up there in the morning. Good. And when Mark West walked in, I won't mention names, but he walked right into a couple of the people, and they saw him, and they just stopped. What can we do for you? He said, I don't know what the heck is going on with this annexation bill. Folks that came out of that committee that day, don't think your presence here is ineffective. I don't know that Washington works. I don't want to get into that. I'm so frustrated. I'm like, Mark, let us fix things we can fix here. The solutions are coming from the bottom, folks, there and be pushed up. They're not coming from the top down. People who put this petition together and unite in common cause will change America if we will start focusing on what we can change. Let's start with a referendum. Let's start with Larry Grohn back on the city commission with our county commission. And let's start at the state. Help us turn this state into a red state. Not red counties and blue cities. Now, some of the cities in Tennessee are doing a great job. There are some counties that are so weak out of the rural areas that the cities literally do everything for the counties. Well, that's flip-flop to us. I understand that. If we need to make an exemption for the counties that won't function, I understand that. But if you will text, if you will call, if you will email your representatives in the state house, let me assure you we read them. I got 32 of them driving from Nashville to home today. I've already read every one of them. I've already responded to all the marijuana ones. Got a little cut and paste I use on those. Um, and there are a couple of them, the common core I've got. Cut and paste there. Uh, there are a couple of them I need to really call the people and talk to them because I'm not sure what they're talking about. Please help us. Now, Mark said something, and I hate it when the camera's here because on more than one occasion I've been told on the floor we see what you're saying down at the tea party. Well, they're going to see it again. <laughs> Last night I was approached by the two leaders of the Democratic Party, and they said, Mike, we have you 28 votes. Do you know how many Democrats voted for the bill last year? Two. Who am I fighting this year? Republicans. Now, with those Democrats, and they said last night, do you know why we're doing this? And I said, no. <laughs> Will you tell me? And they said, yes. The right to vote is an issue that Democrats must own. You all are for the right to vote. You're rich people. You want to oppress people. We want to free people with the right to vote. I said, I don't care if you want to fly to the moon. You help me get this bill passed. I want the people to vote. It is a little disappointing to me that my main battles in this have been Republicans. And what you learn is this. If you're for less taxes, less government, less regulation, and more freedom, then you're a conservative, not a Republican. You know, that's right. And if you've got 14 Republican bumper stickers on your car, and you're for more government, more regulation, more taxes, and to me that equals less freedom, folks, you're not a Republican. Right. Because I believe conservatives, Republicans are conservatives. If you don't want to argue that with me, you will at least agree with me on this. They are not conservatives. So watch what we do, not what we say or not what letter is beside our name. Don't let us get by with that. All right? Please, 
write your legislator, urge them to pass this bill. We've got to get over this hump by next Wednesday or we won't have a bill. So please contact our Todd Gardenhire and, and Bo Watson and each one. Now they're all for it, don't get me wrong. But every day up there, the Tennessee Municipal League is beating them over the head, encouraging them to go the other way. I want to hear from you all. When we're up there and we only hear from one side, you can forget there is other side. Don't let us forget. Finally, one other bill that I filed today and already has 41 sponsors and it hasn't even hit the internet yet is that I filed a bill today to say the state cannot assume the debt of any failed municipality. If a city spends itself into oblivion, it must file bankruptcy. It cannot come to us for fiscal bailout. So uh, if you want to throw a plug in for that while you're sending out your emails, I'd appreciate that. Mark, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I forgot to say when you were all talking about Candace, I'm running. I've already qualified. I'm in the 29th district, which is a little bit of the Appleton. It's all of Udawal, Snow Hill, Birchwood, Crosses River, gets Bakewell, and, and Sell Creek. We'll be, up, we'll be up there tomorrow. Folks, call me if I can help you do anything. Whether you're in the district or not, don't care. Please help us do this. Hold those of us who claim to be conservatives. Hold us to that. But more important than that, is there something more conservative? Is there something better than being conservative? Do the right thing. The right thing is always the right thing, all the time. And so I'm more for that than I am anything else. Help us pass this law. Help us stop this migration into liberal areas of, of more government. And I really need your help. And last year, we wouldn't have got where we got without Mark West and without the power that you all, the credibility you all bring to him because he represents you well everywhere he goes, especially in that. So remember the bill. Remember, I can't give you a number now. I can't tell you what email to put in it because I can't file it until I get a simple sponsor. And I'm working on that. And I'm working on that. I'm working on that. I'm, I'm buying lunch and hugging and kissing three of them now. <laughs> so which so three? They need calls. Let, they, let's see, let's, they, they want some time to think about that. So that. But if you'll start writing letters to everybody, call them and encourage them, that will let them know that you're out here. And I need them to realize that when that mayor calls them and threatens them, I need them to know that there's only one mayor in each town. There are thousands of citizens. Please. Help us get this done. All right. Thank you so much. I, I was in a meeting today and they started giving out a lot of stuff and people weren't picking it up. I knew I was coming here tonight, so I picked up about all of it. It's in the back, the blue books, which are, if you don't have a blue book, you need one. The new ones will be out in two months and I'll bring new ones then, but Let's get those. There's a Tennessee Facts book, which is sort of a, the Cliff Notes version of the Blue Book. And finally, what you're going to hear, be hearing about next year and the year after are roads. We've got the best road system in America. We owe absolutely no money whatsoever on it. Uh, we're really going to hit a crunch in a year or two because electric cars and hybrid cars, we're using so much less fuel that our gas tax is dropping. And so there's going to be some real debate about that, and I'll be back when those facts are known next year and, and talk and get ideas about how to do that. This is a great book about the road system in Tennessee. I think I've got about 10 of those. They're all back. Please take those things and educate yourself. Thank Thanks, you, Mike. And just to confirm, uh, the Senate is controlled by Republicans, right? Yes, and the vote was unanimous. Okay. Last time, but okay. that was before the mayors and the TML had a year to work. Okay. Yes. Mark, before we get off of it, what was that second bill that we need to fast check? Uh, it's Bill 1398. 1398. Yeah. And it simply says that the state cannot assume the debt of any failed municipality. As you know, our governor has written 
a particular city five letters warning them, stop spending. You're grossly insolvent. They owe more money to state of Tennessee of And I want it, I want to be on record. You've been in meetings with bond, bond lawyers. And I want the AAA bond rating of Tennessee that was just obtained to be to be retained by having the law say no, don't have to worry about that, we're not going to pay their debt. What's the short title of that bill? It does not have a title. We're referring to it as the Municipal Debt Act. <laughs> if you'll just put in there Bill 1398, that'll everybody will know what it is. Thank you, Mark. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Uh